Welcome back to part two of trapezoids. In this video, we'll be discussing mid-segments. So first, what is a mid-segment? Well, mid-segment is this segment right here, EF, which is in the middle of the trapezoid, right? So we call the mid-segment the mid-segment because it's in the middle there. And it connects the midpoints of the legs. So point E is the midpoint of AD and point F is the midpoint of segment BC. And some interesting stuff happens when you have the mid-segment of a trapezoid. So if EF, if this is the mid-segment, then we're gonna know uh, two things about it. One is that EF is parallel to both AB and DC. Now keep in mind, a, B, and D, C were already parallel anyway. That's what makes this a trapezoid, a quadrilateral, one pair of parallel sides. And the mid-segment is also parallel to those sides. So now you have um, three lines parallel. So if you think about three parallel lines and you come down like this, then this angle, this angle, and this angle are all gonna be congruent by corresponding angles. They're corresponding and they're corresponding. So by transitivity, these guys are also uh, identical and also corresponding. All right, and that's a, gonna be a big deal. The other piece is that EF, the length of EF is going to be equal to half, so we're gonna divide by two, the length of AB plus DC. If you add this length, to this length and you take those two and you combine them and you divide it by two you're going to get the length of EF. So let's see how this works out in practice. It's going to be super easy and super fast. So as we roll right into the notes it says use this trapezoid for questions one through four. So here we are in number two. If AB is equal to seven so if this length is seven and DC is equal to 31 and find the length of EF. Well, EF is equal to AB plus DC divided by two, which is equal to, I believe that AB was worth seven, DC was worth 31, we're gonna divide that by two, and that's what EF, that mid-segment's gonna be. Well, 31 plus seven is 38, and half of 38 is 19. So EF must be worth 19. Press pause, do number one. Okay, and now we move on to number four, and uh, we're still using the uh, same drawing because it said to use that drawing for one through four. So we take a look, AB is equal to 41, so this is 41, and EF is worth 47, and they want us to find DC, so that's what we're looking for. So again, EF is equal to AB plus DC divided by two. In this case, the algebra changes a little bit. They gave us that EF was 47. So I'm gonna say 47 is equal to AB, which they gave me as 41, plus DC, which is the part I don't know, divided by two. So now we're just gonna set up a proportion and cross multiply. So I'm just gonna kind of move the equal sign here so it's a little bit more right in the center. So we're going to cross multiply, which means multiply across. So two times 47 is gonna be one times 41 plus X. Now, even though I'm distributing one, nothing's gonna change. So that's 41 plus X and two times 47 is going to be 94. Now, all I need to do is subtract 41 from both sides, and I get the value of x, it's going to be 3, 53, and keep in mind that the length of dc was what we called x, so if x is 53, then dc I guess is worth 53 or 53 units, and maybe we want to put up here 19 units for a length measurement. Now in this next problem, we're looking at a trapezoid where Y and Z are midpoints of the legs, which makes 
YZ a mid segment, right? So this is a mid segment, which means that YZ is equal to half of the sum of PQ plus SR. So let's come and do our algebra down here. And so we say YZ, so instead of writing YZ, we're gonna say what it's worth. It's 5X minus 19. And what's that equal to? The sum of PQ plus SR, which is X plus 14, half of that. Now what? I suppose we'll put this over one and uh, we'll set this up and solve as a proportion. Now one of the things we can do is combine like terms to make us make our lives a little bit easier. So before we cross multiply, we'll just say 5x minus 19 over 1 is equal to, and we're just going to add 38 plus 14 to give us 52 plus x, or x plus 52, however we want to write it. And now we got ourselves a nice little proportion we can solve. So there's implied parentheses around these expressions. So we're going to continue on up over here, and we're going to say that 2 times 5x minus 19, oops, close parentheses, is equal to 1 times 52 plus x. Now 2 times 5, right, we're going to distribute here and distribute here. That's going to be 10x minus 2 19, so it's 38, equals 52 plus x. Now we just use inverse operations, so minus x, minus x, 9x, this whole thing comes down, minus 38 equals 52, that cancels out, plus 38, plus 38, and we get the 9x drops down, 38 cancels, and this is going to give us 90, divide by 9, divide by 9, and x equals 10. Now that's not our final answer. Our final answer is the length of yz. Now yz is worth 5x minus 19, and x is equal to 10. So that's going to be 50 minus 19. Well, 50 minus 20 is 30, so 50 minus 19 must be 31. So yz is equal to 31. And we are in good shape. All we're going to keep doing is just practicing this proportional algebra business. So we'll take a look. Uh, again, you got U and V are midpoints, making U, V a mid-segment, right? This is a mid-segment. And what do I know? I know that U, V is equal to one-half of WX plus ZY, right? Keep writing this with me. And so now what? Let's go for the algebra. So we take that statement, and instead of writing uv, I'm going to write what uv is worth. 8x minus 3 equals, right? And I'm going to put this over 1 because you know it's coming. It's going to be equal to x plus 7. That's wx plus zy, which is 6x plus 5, half of that. Now let's combine like terms before we cross multiply so I'm just going to rewrite the left equals and then we got our x the positive 6x is going to give us a 7x and then I got positive 7 and positive 5 is going to give us positive 12 divided by 2 now we got ourselves a nice little proportion to solve we got our implied parentheses and what happens we have 2 times 8x minus 3 equals 1 times 7x plus 12. Now again, it's the right side here. When I multiply times 1, is going to be just itself. And I don't have to write 1 times all that stuff. I could just write 7x plus 12. But it's just, you know, good practice. So as we move over to here and distribute that 2 through, we're going to have uh, 16x minus 6 is equal to 7x plus 12. Now what? 
good algebra says, subtract the 7x instead of the 6x. And again, you know, this far into uh, the course, we should be getting better at deciphering when it's time to combine like terms and when it's time to do inverse operations. 16x minus 7 is 9x. The negative 6 drops down, that cancels out. Positive 12 drops down. Add the 6, add the 6, and we get 9x is equal to, that cancels out, 18. Divide by 9, divide by 9, and 9 goes nicely into 18 twice. So we have the value x equals 2. But again, they want the value of uv. uv is equal to 8 times x minus 3, and x is 2. So that's going to be 16 minus 3, which is 13. That's the value of u. And we are, again, just in great shape here. Now, at this point, you should complete all the notes and the rest of the homework in the homework section. And I believe you had stopped at number 10, so now you can complete... Um, 11 through 15, right? After, check in your notes and homework with me. In the meantime, you have a right, blank sheet. So go to the blank sheet in your notes. Right, you have a blank sheet, go to that now and copy all of these boxes. So you should have the boxes set up just as I have. So you have this idea of special quadrilaterals. And so what kind of quadrilaterals did we first talk about? We talked about two pairs of parallel sides, right? And that means parallel. And this began the journey down parallelograms. And then there were two types of parallelograms. We had rectangles and rhombi. Remember rectangles had was a parallelogram with four right angles. And rhombi had four congruent sides. You put those both together, and you ended up with a square. Conversely, if you come over here with just one pair of parallel sides, you ended up with a trapezoid. And if you had a trapezoid with congruent legs, you had yourself an isosceles trapezoid. So you'll notice that trapezoids are on their own side of the street here. They have nothing to do with the other special quadrilaterals that we talked about. And this is sort of the culmination of the quadrilaterals unit. So now you're ready to uh, make sure that you have all of this in your notes. You're ready to move on and complete the rest of the project as laid out here and here. Make sure that you check in these notes with me when you're all done. When you're complete, I'll give you the handout that actually lists all of the properties of parallelograms, the additional properties for rhombi and rectangles, the additional for squares and isosceles trapezoids and everything about mid-segments, a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, we'll be ready to take a quiz in our next class just on trapezoids. All right. So stay on the target. Keep working. You're doing great.